She throws that fastball, rise, drop, changeup, screw, but the game changer is her changeup. And a called strike one. We are underway on a chilly April night here in Knoxville. Number four, Tennessee, number three, Georgia, in the heart of the SEC season. Great to have you with us here tonight. Lindy Ray Davis takes ball one, and she was slotted in the leadoff spot back on March 8th. This is a Georgia team that returns plenty of power, and they've got th five players hitting over 350. This is a red-hot hit in Georgia Bulldogs team. Lindy Ray Davis leading things off, one of five players batting over 350 right now. And ahead, two balls and a strike. The newly minted 21-year-old birthday yesterday for Lindy Ray Davis, the junior catcher for the Bulldogs. Trying to set the table on the top of the first. Two balls and two strikes. Georgia has had a busy week. The Bulldogs 30 and 6. They had a Saturday, Sunday, Monday series against Arkansas. Lost two or three at home to the Razorbacks. Then a Wednesday night win over Mercer. A lot of softball in the last six days in Athens as Tony Baldwin is all bundled up here tonight. And a 2-2. It's just inside the run to count for Tennessee. Meanwhile, 28-5, 8-1 in conference play. Have not played since last Sunday at Auburn. A 4-1 loss to the Tigers, which snapped a 20-game winning streak for the Lady Vaughns. Payoff pitch on the way. Slow roller to second, Rodriguez records the first out. A great opportunity for the freshman, Leach, and she also brings a lot of speed to that position. There is some speed, 76, but a little upstairs to Sarah Mosley. The standout third baseman for Georgia, Mosley preseason All-SEC, preseason All-American. Hop right back to Pickens. Two down. That's 76 miles per hour is right around where Pickens tops out at. That's where she was clocked in the World Series last year. This is a sophomore now that is coming into her own skin, that is really gaining more and more confidence as the second year comes under her belt with Tennessee. And we're starting to show, see that show more in her arsenal, the adding that changeup, and also in her consistency. There is the off speed and a called strike one to Jada Kearney. Power on power here. Kearney, the senior, all American for the Bulldogs. 14 long balls to power this offense. That's the most on this Georgia roster. High hopper could be a tough play. Rodriguez can't handle it. Two out base runner for the Bulldogs. That's a routine ground ball that Rodriguez absolutely has to make that play on. Looked like she was trying to do too much too quickly, tried to grab that ball before she closed it. Another look. This is a, a high hopper, even though it is high. Rodriguez knows she has to get rid of it quick, but she just misses it completely from her glove as she tries to throw too quickly. That's a routine ground ball against a very good hitter that you have to make those outs for your pitcher. Jaden Goodwin. Takes ball one, and Goodwin red hot. Was a slow start to the year for the sophomore, but she is hitting 517 over the last 10 games for Georgia, which all adds up to 415 on the season, 36 games in. Up the middle, Mueller retires the side. So Pickens works around a two-out base runner. We've played in a righty-heavy Tennessee order. Eight of the nine hitters right-handed for the Lady Vols. It begins with Laura Mueller. And he takes strike one. So Mueller in the leadoff spot. Again, no Kiki Malloy. Biggest news here tonight. But a Tennessee team that's had 17 home runs in SEC play, including seven last weekend against Auburn alone. Wheeler, the MTSU transfer, gets a chance here to set the table. It's impossible to replace the All-American Kiki Malloy, but if there is someone to try to do it, it's this young woman in Wheeler right now. She is arguably the hottest hitter for Tennessee in this lineup. Over the last month alone, she's led the team with a 432 average, seven home runs, and also drove in the second most runs with 21 RBI in that span. This is a hot hitter. This is why she's leading off. 
Paul Speed is in there for a strike to even it at two and two. First year on Rocky Top for the Chapel Hill, Tennessee native. She was first team all conference USA all region for the Blue Raiders at MTSU last season. And she led the team in hitting, had 12 homers. And she has worked the count full to begin the home first. Wheeler has quieted up her swing a little bit from last year when she's with MTSU and it's been quickly paying off. She also has a foot that hovers a little bit for a tiny me mechanism at the plate. That also helps her time up the changeup as well, a pitch that she tends to hit very well. Again, that, that front left foot hovers off just a tad bit, whether it's a fastball, whether it's changeup, and then she adjusts to the pitch based on the timing. Payoff pitch again. Out and out ball four, and Mueller is aboard. Lead off base runner for Tennessee for Riley West, who has been. We'll definitely need her this weekend with the absence of Malloy. First pitch is a called strike. Riley West playing with a newfound freedom this season. A big change in the mindset for the senior, not putting as much pressure on herself to have to be perfect out there each time, and it has led to her most productive campaign in the orange and white. Head coach Karen Weekly telling us that that was a big emphasis ahead of the season in the fall to not just Riley West, but the entire team, making sure they weren't bringing that pressure, putting too much pressure on them that carried over from their Women's College World Series appearance. This is a brand new team with a new identity. She wants all her players to play free. Popped up, shallow right. The second baseman, Kuma, makes the grab. One out. Nice play by Kuma, having to go backtrack over her right shoulder to track that down in shallow right center field. That's not an easy out, and any time that you can get Riley West, a hot hitter in this lineup, to pop up, that's a win. There is Kuma, anchoring part of this veteran Georgia defense. The Bulldogs returning all nine offensive starters from that super regional team in 2023. They do have a freshman in Emily Digby over at first base, but she is surrounded by a whole lot of experience as McKenna Gibson takes off speed for strike one. Gibson, one of six Lady Vol hitters that are hitting over 350. And in 366, seeing the ball very well, especially in SEC competition. That's it well to left field, and Boo Gibson puts the Lady Vols on the board quickly. Big time blast for McKenna Gibson. Her sixth home run of the season, 2-0 Tennessee. Gibson turns on this inside pitch and lets her power take care of the rest. A shot over the left field fence. A beauty by Boo Gibson. Take another look. Watch the way she keeps her hands inside. That means her barrel stays through the zone incre incredibly long, and that brings the power and the pop behind her swing. We've seen her do this over and over again. But Gibson coming up clutch here to set the tone, bottom of the first. So very quickly, Tennessee jumps out in front at home, a place where they have been tough to beat. The Lady Vols riding a 17-game home winning streak going back to last season. All smiles in that Tennessee dugout. And Zeta Pooney in the cleanup spot. Take strike two. Also an important leadoff at bat by Laura Mueller, being yeah. able to draw that walk, get on base, make it a 2-0 game as opposed to a solo home run from Gibson. So nice job from the top of the Lady Vols lineup to start this series. Back is in with the 0-2. That's something Tony Baldwin mentioned coming into the week is that Georgia could not let Tennessee take advantage of those base runners. Solo home runs are fine. Those won't kill you, but it's limiting the long ball with runners on base. Tennessee and Georgia are the, are the top two home run hitting teams in the SEC. Yeah. They're back-to-back, they're -back, 59 and 57 home runs, right? So the long ball is going to happen. Eventually, you will give that up. It's eliminating those free bases to put runners on, making it a shorter impact. Right field, carrying in the yard for Kearney. Two down. 
base, a converted shortstop, but finding her way onto the diamond. Two down for Destiny Rodriguez. As the off speed misses, low four ball one. Rodriguez, 329 hitter this season, the sophomore from Texas. Rodriguez is one of those players in the Lady Vols lineup that worked her way into the lineup. Last season, season she had an opportunity to come in for an injured Blair Boutte and made the most of her opportunity. Has now found a spot in this very, very tough lineup to crack for Tennessee. And Kate Wheatley said she was one of the hardest workers when she came in as a freshman. And found a lot of playing time, just inconsistent. Came in off the bench a lot last year, coming into her own now in her sophomore season. Three balls and a strike as Backus tries to get out of the first. Lily Backus pitched twice in that series against Arkansas. Got the start on Friday and then came in in relief on Sunday in the two games. Georgia lost in that series. I should say Saturday and Monday. And second free pass of the first as Rodriguez is aboard. Backus did a nice job after giving up the two-run home run to Gibson. Came back, got Zeta Pooney, another tough hitter, to pop out for that second out. Now got behind in the count there to Destiny Rodriguez. We'll have to go through Taylor Panel now to get that third out. You'll see her go to that rise ball pretty frequently. Has a little bit of a jump, that rise ball, that kind of tails up the last second, trying to get hitters to swing underneath it and, and miss it entirely. A tough pitch to get a barrel on. One ball and one strike to Taylor Panel. With Rodriguez aboard at first. Two run homer from McKenna Gibson ignited this Tennessee offense early in this top five showdown. 1-1. One, one. Strike two. Georgia head coach Tony Baldwin saying that one of their keys was, well, keep Kiki Malloy off the bases. She's out today, so now her teammates are having to step up. But another one of his keys, manage the strike zone. He said our pitchers have to do a good job of keeping the pressure on the hitters. And the first strikeout recorded right now. Clean first inning and her first pitch of the second misses low to Sydney Chambly. Chambly, the designated player, the senior out of Dallas, Georgia. Had a stellar opening weekend for the Bulldogs, trying to find some of that form here in the middle of the season. Thought that was a key word you use in terms of Carlin Pickens' consistency, something Tennessee saw flashes of last year, but the Lady Vols are seeing it in her sophomore campaign, big part of the reason this staff is the lowest ERA in the country. And credit to Pickens offseason. She put in the work, really honed in on her other pitches besides the fastball. Ground ball pitcher, Mueller lays out, no play. Infield single for Sydney Chambly, and she's born to begin the Georgia second. Nice dive by Mueller at shortstop, but because it's right up the middle in that hole, that it's just too hard for her to get back on her knees and make that cross across, uh, throw across the diamond. Credit to Chambly for beating that out and, and also putting it in a place that would make it difficult for Mueller to throw her out. So one aboard for Sydney Kuma, who shows bunt, and it rolls foul. I like this move by Georgia right now. Sacrifice bunt by the by the six-hole hitter in Kuma, even though Kuma does swing a hot bat. The goal right now, get that runner over. Get 60 feet closer to home plate because there's a good chance that runs are going to be limited in this top five matchup. Now Kuma, a player that can beat you multiple ways offensively. She has a lot of pop in that bat, but also the speed to beat out the drag bunt on the ground if needed. Pickens coming in at 68 miles per hour. You'll see that velo drop a little bit when it when it when she throws her other pitches other than that fastball. And then she'll come back right at you with that 74 mile per hour screwball inside. Very tough pitch to hit. Hitters have to have a game plan before they even step into the box. They have to know what they're looking for and hone in on that, or else by the time they decide to swing, it'll be too late. Even at two and two for Kuma. The senior, one of 
14 upperclassmen on this 23-person roster, a veteran Georgia team. And she works the count full. Coach Bald Baldwin says that Kuma is as explosive athletically as any other player in sports. She, he says she can hit a country mile, also <laughs> can beat out a bunt, extremely athletic. She can do it all. And she stays alive to see another. And that will be a, another big key for Georgia, not only tonight in game one, but throughout the series, making adjustments. That's the name of a game when it comes to SEC play. How quickly can you make adjustments from game one to game two, but also in-game adjustments, inning one to inning two. Squibber to second, only plays to first, one out. Heads up move by Rodriguez. She quickly glanced at the runner going to two. Realized that was going to be a little bang bang, a little too close for comfort. Got the easy out at one. Now Lady Vols with a crucial first out and Georgia with a runner in scoring position. So Chambly moves up to second for Ellie Armistead, the shortstop in the seven spot. And Armistead takes inside four ball one. Really good defensive athlete, the senior from Virginia, and she's gotten better and better offensively in her time in Athens, working with Tony Baldwin and company. Carlin Pickens facing Georgia for the first time in her collegiate career. These two teams did not play last season but they've seen a lot of each other. 84th all-time meeting. One and two. I like that pitch on that inside corner. It looked like a little bit of a, a rise ball and also a screw ball. Sometimes she can get a little bit of a rise out of that screw ball, especially to her arm side, kind of like a, a screw rise, give or take. An excellent pitch and a tough pitch to get your hands in front of and around. The scries, oh, the scries. no part of that. How about, how about that? Filthy. Oh, and she's Pickens is so dominant to that right-hand side, whether it's that rice ball, fastball, screwball. Righties are, should expect it in a lot. That gets away from Nugent. Chambly up 60 feet and 60 away from making it a one-run ball game. Good heads-up play by Chambly. She sees as soon as that ball goes off of Nugent's hands, she's taking that free bag. Free bases won't come very often in this game. And for Nugent behind the plate, just a tough rice ball to get her glove on top of. Rodriguez comes home, and it is an out. Nugent slaps on the tag. Textbook play by Destiny Rodriguez at second base. She charges the slow roller, lets it take that bounce, watches it in her glove, checks the runner, and immediately goes forward right here. Gloves the ball, sees the runner. She almost looked like she was going to first for a second, but then realized that she was taking off Chamley from third and was able to get it home in time. Also a nice job by Nugent behind the plate, making sure she gets that tap. Microphone not working there for Lyndon Baptiste, the home plate umpire, but may convey that we're going to take another look at this. So Georgia uses the first of its two challenges. If they win it, they keep it. Now the call on the field was out at home, so it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn that and put the Bulldogs on the board as we take another look. You're looking for Nugent's glove hand, where she tags, and then where does Chambly tag the plate? It looks very clear that Nugent's glove, with the ball in it, comes across, and she's able to tag Chambly on that left leg, leg excuse me, before Chambly's left hand comes in. It looks pretty clear that Chambly's left hand slides in after she's already tagged. Yeah, that look right there. That's going to be hard to overturn. Gives it a great illustration. And the call wasn't out at home. So Lyndon Baptiste delivers the news to the delight of the fans. Destiny Rodriguez all smiles. 
the old 4-2 in the scorebook. As a runner, that's a, that's a very tough position to be in with Chambly because you see it up in the air, taking its time to drop and could catch Destiny Rodriguez at a tough bounce. It, you have to decide in a split second to go or not. Chambly pulled the trigger, but got, was caught out. Strike one to Emily Digby, and her body weight was all shifted towards first base. It was a last second decision there to come to the plate for Rodriguez. So as it stands, Georgia down on the board, still 2-0 Tennessee as the freshman stares down at 0-1 count. Emily Digby, real bright spot in this Georgia order this season. has come in and worked herself into the lineup as an everyday starter as a true freshman and a team that has already been battle tested. Georgia assistant coach JT D'Amico calls her tonic water. This is one of <laughs> my favorite nicknames I've ever heard. Calls her tonic water because she goes with anything. Very even keel, very balanced mindset, and that's extremely rare when you have a freshman, a freshman that's starting for a powerful team. Just off the plate, no chase. Pickens in search of her first strikeout tonight. The 2-2 two -two runs the count full. A nice at bat by the freshman. Fouling off anything close with two strikes on her. Digby's seen her change up, that rise ball. Pickens has also gone inside with that screw ball. Right now, Digby has to know exactly what she's looking for. Also protect with two strikes. And she works her way aboard. Armistead, an aggressive round of round second, but she'll stay there. Two on with two out for the Bulldogs. Big opportunity here for Georgia, even though there's two outs with two runners, they have to be able to capitalize with runners in scoring position. That was a good night, fouled away the first pitch. Almost took out the knees of Tony Baldwin. Now in his third season as the head coach, 12th year overall in Georgia staff. Led the dogs to the Super Regional last season. And now getting to see some of his own recruits come through Athens, but he has been down in the red and black for quite a while. Oh, one, two, good night in the nine spot. Did not play on Monday in the series finale against Arkansas. Was battling a lingering injury, but did play Wednesday night against Mercer. So back and healthy for this top five showdown this weekend. In an 0-2 hole. Doesn't chase. That'll give everyone a free bag. Two in scoring position. That's the second time we've seen Pickens go upstairs and it escapes the glove of Nugent behind the bait, behind the plate. Another look at this one. This is a rise ball that Nugent's just unable to get a glove over it. Pickens needing to hone in right now. Making sure she has that command and consistency. Strike three call. First strike out of the night for Carlin Pickens. And it's back is back to work. Ball one to Sophia Nugent. High expectations for this Tennessee Lady Vols team trying to get back to Oklahoma City. And that was a conversation Coach Weekly had with her team in the fall. Hey, let's not try to put too much pressure on ourselves to get back there. Let's just focus on what we do best. Coach Weekly saying that she could feel a lot of her, her players already came into the fall with that weight on their shoulders of, okay, how, how do we get back to that? How do we be perfect again? Coach Weekly said, hey, it's not about that. It's not doing exactly what you did last year. It's doing the right things well, focusing in on the details. And that all starts in fall, carries over to the preseason, and of course, carries over to SEC play. The conference link, that was the best start in program history. Tennessee began 8-0 in the SEC before that Sunday loss on the Plains at Auburn. Lady Vols won 20 in a row leading into that throughout the month of March. That was the longest win streak in the nation at that time. Three balls and a strike. Backus 
Spins it in. Nugent with a healthy hat comes up empty. Sophia Nugent, the Oklahoma transfer, going up against the North Carolina transfer, Lily Backus. Backus with that nice sequence of coming in with a change up and then going upstairs for the rise. Hit well on a hop. Mosley snags and fires a strike. Nugent was on was able to get on top of that rise ball, which is not an easy pitch to hit, especially when it's coming in in the high 60s. But a nice play by Mosley at third. Another look at this. Nugent able to get her bat on top of it, kind of rolls it, gets that short hop to Mosley, and very nice play to her non-glove side to make the out at one. And Mosley is an elite arm in terms of accuracy over there at third. And Took care of business there for the first out of the second. 2 nothing Tennessee, thanks to a two-run blast in the home first from McKenna Gibson. Base is empty and one down for Julia Katsoyanopoulos. One ball and one strike. Katsoyanopoulos now in her second season in Knoxville after transferring in from Arizona, where she was a part of a Women's College World Series team for the Wildcats and has perhaps the Strongest softball IQ on this Lady Vol roster. And she's put a lot of work in with Chris Malvo in the cages, working on her approach offensively. Katsoyanopoulos also uses that split grip. It helps that split grip, helps her with her whip and the rotation of her barrel through the zone. If you work the correct sequence with your bottom half and then also your bottom hand and your top hand, will help you get a ton of nat natural power in that pop behind your head. Five pitch walk. Third free pass issued by Backus. A one out base runner in the second. Free bases are going to be a, a key for Georgia. Whoever is in the circle, whether it's Backus or, or someone else later in the evening, you can't give up free bases to top teams like Tennessee because they will take advantage of them, especially with the speed on the bases as well. Well, here we go. Welcome to the SEC. Alana Leach takes ball one, the true freshman from the Woodlands, Texas, getting her 11th start of the season, but a big slot as she slides into center field for the injured Kiki Malloy. Not in the lineup tonight. It is Leach, the freshman, and the lone lefty for the Lady Falls. Alana, one of the Leach twins, one of four of the Leach girls now to make their way through this program. Twice All-State in her home state of Texas. And now in a one-two hole, there is Kiki Malloy. Boot on the right foot, day to day. The official word on Malloy, but still on the first step. Loud and active. Strike three, swinging, second strikeout for Backus. Backus went outside the previous two pitches, high and outside, and then comes in here with the off speed, gets her swinging down low in the dirt. It's a tough at bat for the freshman, and a nice job by Backus, able to get that second out of the inning. Top of the order, and Laura Miller walked and scored on the two-run homer leadoff spot that has predominantly been occupied by Malloy this season. But Miller, a veteran transfer. Take strike one. Karen Winkley says she brings some moxie and some swagger that this team needs as Katsoyanopoulos stands on first. Coach Weekly telling us that when Miller came to UT, she had a sense that she had to prove herself very quickly, like she belonged coming from MTSU. She put too much pressure on herself, and coach said that Mueller had a conversation with her, said, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to play free. And that really was a huge moment for Mueller because after that, coach said she, could, she felt her settle in, have more fun. She was seeing the ball better. Let her just took taking off that pressure from someone that already has so much pressure, right? It, it makes a world of difference, and now you're seeing it in her numbers and at the plate. 2-2 on the way. 
try it again. I also like Mueller in this leadoff spot because she has a great eye, selective. She drew the walk in her first at bat. Runs it full, Katsoyanopoulos takes second and is in scoring position. Great opportunity for Tennessee right here. Katsoyanopoulos in scoring position, looking to add to the 2 nothing lead for the Lady Vols. And Mueller's been in these situations before. She's been in the lineup all last two months. She loves these moments. To second, snared by Kuma. Oh, what a play at the shoes. And almost two years ago, to the weekend down in Athens. A series won by the Bulldogs that was full of offense. Ten runs scored in all of those games and two wins in the circle for Madison Kerpix, who we may see later tonight and will undoubtedly see later this weekend for Georgia. Top of the order, Lindy Ray Davis skies it to center field where Alana Leach handles the first out. Tennessee and Georgia finishing the 2023 regular season one and two. They didn't meet last year, like you mentioned. So now coming into this year, they were picked one and two in the SEC preseason poll. And that's why this one was circled on the calendar a long time ago, Maya. And this is a matchup, and this is the most important SEC series for these two teams right now. Called strike to Sarah Mosley. 0 for 1, bounced out back to Pickens back in the first. Yeah, only a point separated these two teams in the preseason poll. Tennessee just barely edged the Bulldogs. Lady Vols right now atop the Southeastern Conference standings with that 8-1 and one start. Georgia 6-3 and three in the SEC. They lost 2-3 to Arkansas last weekend. So right now in the five slot. But still over a month to go in conference play before the end of the regular season. Kathy Hack, 1-2. A big reason why these two teams were picked to finish one and two in the conference, they have almost their entire rosters returning. For Georgia, all nine starters returning from last year, and for Tennessee, with the exception of Ashley Rogers and Lair Boutte, they have everyone back. So two teams that are very similar to last year. Strike three, Mosley down swinging, second K in the circle for Pickens. Nice job by Pickens coming at Mosley, getting her on that inside pitch, a little bit of a screwball. Pickens, we saw her earlier last inning, maybe lose a little bit of, of her command with that rise ball now honing in. And, and that's going to be the name of the game for Pickens, is finding that consistency in her command. That was an issue last year. She's better already and more confident this year in locating her pitches, finding her spots, and attacking the hitters. Jada Kearney, someone that affects opponent's game plan. Single back in the first was stranded in scoring position. Which is down in an 0-2 hole. Kearney, preseason All-American after an All-American campaign last year, where she hit 365, led the team with 19 home runs. Now playing out her senior campaign in the red and black. Pickens looking for her first perfect inning in the circle. Won't find it there, one and two. She wanted that one. She already started walking towards the dugout, but you see her get the ball back, nod her head. Okay, okay, let's take another crack at it. That's that confidence we're seeing in Pickens that we didn't necessarily see year one as a freshman, but shining in her sophomore campaign. Even at two balls and two strikes to Kearney. You mentioned Kearney's 19 home runs last year. Mine, she already has 14 this season. So she's already on pace to, to break that record. She's seeing the ball very well. This is a dangerous hitter. You do not want to make a mistake with Kearney. Spoils are there, still two and two. We have 14 long balls tied for the SEC lead. And Kearney is someone who was off to an okay start, but something clicked in batting practice for the Sunday game at Ole Miss. Got a little technical with Tony Baldwin, and since then has been lights out. Trying to spark a two-out rally, two balls and two strikes. Strike three, swinging back-to-back -back Ks for Carlin Pickens, and players ever to receive the honor. 
West saying on the Everything Orange podcast that her and Kiki are very close friends. And she says Kiki is one of those teammates that has pushed her to be a better person, a better player, and an all-around better athlete in the community here in Knoxville. And so for her to have received that honor after Kiki Malloy did, and, and like you mentioned, Maya, in the first time Torchbearer Award winners have played together. It's a, it's a special moment for them. Back is back to work. West is 0 for 1 in an 0-2 hole. And the 0-2 pitch just outside. One ball and two strikes. First time that a Tennessee program has had two Torchbearers on the same roster since the late 50s. It's been almost seven decades. That is how unique it is. And West bearing the torch tonight, no Kiki Malloy. And she works the count even to two balls and two strikes. Back is settling into the circle here, Jill, after that two-run homer back in the first. That's the lone hit across for Tennessee and the lone damage for either side tonight. You'll see Backus go to that changeup pretty frequently roughly 10 miles per hour difference than her fastball and her rise. Mixing those speeds makes her difficult to catch up to. Hard passes to short, Armistead can't handle it, and Riley West works her way aboard. She was in an 0-2 hole and runs out as a leadoff base runner. Hard hit ground ball by West off the end of her bat. And Armistead, you see her take her left foot and drop back. That allowed her to open up her body and just was not able to get that glove on the ball. That's a routine ground ball that you have to make at this level, and especially when you're facing a top team like Tennessee. And it was McKenna Gibson who delivered the damage last time. Now she takes ball one. Not something you see much from Georgia there. One of the best defensive teams in the SEC, the third highest fielding percentage in the conference. Area that Armistead has really improved is short. We'll see if the dogs can withstand that self-inflicted wound here to start the third. And when you're going up against top hitting teams like Tennessee or like Georgia, you have to be able to make those ground ball outs. Off speed in for a strike, one and one because this goes back to head coach Tony Baldwin's big key to this game is, is making sure you're minimizing the damage. Yes, long balls are going to happen, home runs are going to happen, but let's not give up free bases and definitely not on errors. Gibson through the left side. Second hit of the night for McKenna Gibson and the Tennessee offense rolling to start the third. Nice at bat by Gibson, able to pull this one. She stays inside, keeps her hands inside, goes straight to the ball with her barrel, able to poke it in that 5-6 hole for a base hit. Now Lady Vols with two runners on, no outs. We're getting to the heart of the lineup here with Zeta Puni at the plate. Amanda Allen in to pinch run for Gibson. Allen with some speed at first, and a welcome reception back in the third base dugout for McKenna Gibson. Two on, nobody out. West in scoring position with plenty of speed. And the cleanup hitter, Zeta Pooney, climbing in. 0 for 1, flied out to right back in the first. Another key for Coach Baldwin and his Bulldogs, he said they need to manage the strike zone. He said our pitchers, they have to do a good job of keeping the pressure. Is. Should the trouble continue for Bacchus in the circle. The ball and no strikes, the pitch to Pooney. Catches the corner, strike one. Say to Pooney, offseason shoulder surgery, so she was still ramping up in the early portions of the season, back to full health. Power numbers certainly there, just waiting for the average to tick up and match, but there's no doubt in anyone's mind, the prowess at the plate. In the driver's seat, two balls and a strike. Ground ball to third, Mosley charges in, throws to first. Pooney advances the runners, two in scoring position, with just one out for Tennessee. 
a nice pitch by Backus, getting Zeta Puni to roll over this rice ball and force her ground out. She's just unable to get that barrel on top of it, causes the ground ball to Mosley at third, and Mosley takes care of the rest. That's a crucial first out. However, Tennessee able to move up 60 feet now with two runners in scoring position. And therefore, Destiny Rodriguez who takes a strike. Infielders for Georgia right now. Several feet up, playing in shallow territory so they can make the force out at home if they need to. Kind of a, a one or two steps behind the baseline. They need to be able to get any ground ball in their area and quickly try to throw Riley West out at home if she breaks for home. 2 1 on the way. Her first time up, and Stringham did it first. West at third, the pinch runner, Allen, in scoring position at second. And Lily Backus fires her 66th pitch of the outing. Failing foul, just barely. Ooh, maybe a foot or two. <laughs> <laughs> you could kind of hear the, the deep gasp of everyone. She, Hits this on the end of the bat, and because of, of the angle and the pitch outside, it tails away from the diamond and stays foul. You can kind of hear a gasp, kind of a, oh, oh my goodness, that was close. Keeps the count anchored at two balls and two strikes. Back is home with it. Strike three, swinging. Big time K for Lily Backus, her third of the night. Nice job by Backus coming back at Rodriguez here with an off speed low in the zone, difficult to hit. And she's just unable to get her bat and barrel around it. A crucial second out here for the Bulldogs. Taylor Panel takes ball one. Panel down on strikes her first time up. Tennessee had two on with nobody out to begin the third inning. Looking to avoid an empty frame, which is just what Backus is searching for. Pretty pitch, one and one. There's that elite changeup again. Roughly 10 miles per hour slower than the rest of her pitches, than the rise ball and that screwball and curve. Because of that difference in speeds, makes her very difficult to time up as a hitter. When you know you're facing a pitcher with a tough changeup, such as Bacchus's, you have to have a game plan. Are you going to look for that changeup, go after it, or are you going to be able to quickly adjust if you're looking for a fastball? So you have to have a game plan in mind. Panel struck out against Bacchus last time, needs to make that adjustment at the plate the second time through the lineup. The 1-1, one, one. no chase, two balls and a strike. What do you think that mid-count pep talk was from Chris Malvo? Three balls and a strike. Let's see a panel can work her way aboard for the first time tonight. Ball four. Whatever the chat was, it worked. Three balls right after that. <laughs> Lady Vol Locos are loving it. Yeah, they are. Bases loaded here. This is a big moment for Tennessee. Two outs, bottom of the third. They're leading 2 nothing, but with bases loaded, and Sophia Nugent coming out to the plate. This is a big opportunity for them to bust open this inning. An aggressive take, strike one called. Big moment for Nugent. Her first season. Here in Knoxville, Tennessee recruited her heavily out of high school. She went to Oklahoma. 
was a role player for the Sooners, hit the portal last season, didn't even make a return trip to Knoxville. Just took one phone call with Karen Weekly, and she said a week later, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming to Rocky Top. Didn't need to, didn't need any further confirmation than that. Came for nights like this. Space is loaded in a top five battle. Good take by Nugent laying off that rise ball, recognizing that rise ball, especially with two strikes. With two strikes, two outs, bases loaded, she has to protect anything close, at least foul it off. Fights that one foul, still one and two. Backus home with the one-two pitch. To short, backhand stop, the throw across. Not in time. Three-nothing Lady Vols. A tough play for Armistead at shortstop. She's able to feel the ground ball cleanly, and her body was open to third. Tried to go to three to get the force out, but Mosley was off the bag. She then had to try to come all the way across the diamond. Take another look. She backhands this cleanly, but Mosley isn't ready for the force out at three. She has to go to first, and it's not in time. That's a defensive miscue that's going to hurt Georgia because it gives Tennessee another run on the board. Kitsoyanopoulos takes ball one. Looked like they would have had Allen at third, and that's the second miscue this inning. Two defensive miscues that are going to come back to bite the Bulldogs as Tennessee's inning now extends, and look who's at the plate. One ball and one strike on Katsoyanopoulos. One and two. Defensive miscues from veterans you don't expect as the culprits if you're the Bulldogs. One run across for Tennessee. Back is trying to minimize the damage. Two and two. And credit to Backus. She she's getting ground balls. Yes, they're hard ground balls. That that was a hard ground ball off the bat of Nugent and the previous era at the beginning of the inning was a hard ground ball off off the bat of Riley West. But the key is these are, are balls that, that need to be caught, that need to be fielded cleanly because they have to make these outs. Because you won't always get ground ball outs when it comes to Tennessee. Flip foul, we'll try it again. Mistakes you can't make at any point, certainly not against the number four team in the country. Base is still loaded for Katsoyanopoulos. She walked her first time up. Allen at third, panel at second with Nugent aboard at first. Three-run game, Back is trying to keep it there. Her 2-2, two -two. squibbed foul, and down. Another life for Katsoyanopoulos. Looked like it jammed her a little bit. Couldn't get her hands through the zone. And this is their second time through the lineup here facing Bacchus. So Inopolis needing to make adjustment here with bases loaded. Strike three swinging. What a big time K for Lily Bacchus. Time tonight, no Kiki Malloy for the first time this season, first time in her career. How did that affect putting the lineup card together? It's a little weird, you know. <laughs> like you said, first time in her career. Uh, I don't recall, you know, to have a coach the game without her. Uh, but I feel like Mueller was the perfect person to step into that spot, you know. And like I told her, you're only lead off once, and just keep doing what you do. Have great at bats, and Kiki's in the dugout, being an awesome leader for us, like she is every day. 
Coach Weekly, Curlin Pickens going up against a potent Georgia offense. Scattered just two hits so far in this game. What's been the key to her success in the circle so far? Her ability to use her off speed. And so they, you know, can't really get on time with something. And if they're looking for one thing, you know, hopefully we're throwing another. But I think that's the key is changing speeds. And then if she's gotten behind in count, she's been able to come back and, and get batters in big situations. Coach, appreciate the time. Stay yep. warm down there on a chilly night. Thank you. As Karen Weekly, appreciate the time as always here in the heart of battle, this top five matchup between Tennessee and Georgia. Three nothing Lady Vols, a two run homer from McKenna Gibson in the first, and then Tennessee taking advantage of some defensive miscues to score a run in the third. Carmen Pickens coming off her first clean inning in terms of traffic, one, two, three in the circle. Last time out with two Ks and faces the meat of this Georgia order, four, five, and six, as Jaden Goodwin takes ball one. You heard Coach Weekly mention Pickens' changeup. That's been the game changer this season, and she's always had it. She had it last year, but this year she's throwing it with more confidence. She's throwing that changeup 20% more than a year ago and that was something she really honed in on in the off season coach weekly said all fall you are not going to throw your fastball that's your <laughs> bread and butter we're going to work on what you feel least comfortable with two bounces great stop by katsoyanopolis smothers and steps on the bag to retire goodwin that was a hard hit ball off the bat of goodwin and katsoyanopolis kind of makes this look a little, a little fancy, does a, has to dive for it a little bit, goes to her knees and then just uses that left foot to step on first base, almost like a little dance here on Rocky <laughs> Top. Is, but I, this, that's the defensive specialist that Coach Weekly tells us about. She's so good with that glove, no matter where you put her, whether it's first base, outfield, or behind the plate. And she takes a little bit of the air out of the start of this Georgia trip to the plate. 1-0 all the way to Chambly. Fouled away, 1-1. One and one. Sydney Chambly responsible for one of those two Bulldog hits tonight. Singled back in the second. Pickens home with a 1-1. One, one. Pickens change up last year was very effective. She actually had the highest percentage of strikeouts on that changeup last season, and now coming in, it's even better than before. This one, a, a drop ball in the dirt, clocking in at 72, but it's that balance again of not just the changeup, but using that in combination with her fastball, that 72, 73, and then also the drop and the rise, very difficult to time up as a hitter. Strike three, swinging, third strikeout in the last four batters. And the fourth K for Pickens tonight. Pickens goes with the drop ball low in the zone, and, and Chambly just unable to get her barrel underneath that ball. A very difficult pitch to hit. And when you have that drop, that rise, the fastball, screwball, and oh yeah, a changeup. Difficult to time her up, get, difficult to have your get your hands around. That's why you have to have a game plan. We talked to Georgia head coach Tony Baldwin. How, what do you do when you face when you face a pitcher like Pickens? He says, well, you have to prepare for her velo, and then you also have to have a game plan. What are you going after? Kuma up the middle into center field. Two out base knock for Sydney Kuma and some life in the Georgia offense in the fourth. Love the aggression by Kuma. Hacking at the first pitch, and Pickens leaves this over the plate. Middle of the zone. This is a great pitch to jump on, and Kuma does exactly that. Hits it right back up where it came from, trying to get a two-out rally going for the Bulldogs. So she's aboard for Ellie Armistead. And Armistead takes a strike. So what is that game plan in your eyes? How do you attack Carlin Pickens? You have to you have to pick a pitch. If you like that changeup, Get, sit on that changeup, especially because she's throwing it 20% more of, of the time in her appearances. One high hop to Gibson, should retire the side and does. So Georgia unable to do anything with the two outs. Tony Baldwin, head coach of the Georgia program. Coach, appreciate your time tonight. 
Lily Backus in the circle has kept this offense limited, just three hits across. What have you seen from the lefty? Yeah, I think she's just really competing. I don't think she's got her best stuff tonight, and that's uh, indication by the walks. Um, you know, that was one of the goals, try to limit the free passes, and, and we haven't done a great job with that. But I tell you what, you know, she's a competitor, and she's made some pitches, made a pitch to get us out of the inning last inning, and we didn't quite get it done, but, uh, but she's starting to really make some pitches, and that's just what she does. She's a great competitor. And, Coach, your offense has now seen Carlin Pickens two times through the lineup. What adjustments would you like to see them make at the plate? You know, I thought the first time through the lineup we did a pretty good job of making her work and, and sticking with our approach. I thought we got a little bit big uh, in the last inning, but, uh, you know, again, I thought we had uh, three pretty good at-bats right there. You know, she's really good. She's mixing speeds, and, um, you know, you just got to keep competing and see if we can't get back in this thing. Coach, appreciate the time. Hopefully we can shed that top layer and bring out the sun tomorrow. Amen on that. It's for the early start. Tony Baldwin there. Thanks for the time in the heat of battle tonight. An overcast, chilly night in Knoxville. At least the wind isn't howling. There are plenty of fans bundled up to see all the stars shine in this tango at the top of the SEC. So there is Lily back as she is back to work. Tony Baldwin mentioned the free passes. She has issued four walks, three hits, four strikeouts in that line as well through her first three innings. As Alana Leach tries to drop down a bunt, that is foul. No, fair ball, Leach is out. Great play for Davis. Davis didn't even hesitate. Whether he called that fair or foul, she was throwing yeah. that thing to first base. And Alana Leach places it perfectly right in front of the plate. It just dies right there in the batter's box. It's a fair ball. And Davis's throw able to beat Leach by a hair. I like the idea of that sneaky bunt, but Davis says, not on my watch. Ball, a veteran in the circle at the top of the Tennessee order as Laura Mueller takes ball one. Mueller has walked and grounded out 0 for 1 with a run scored tonight. <laughs> 1 0 offer from Walters. Inside two balls and no strikes. This is the eighth consecutive game in the circle for Walters. She's pitched every night going back to the middle of the Ole Miss series two weekends ago. 3 -0. An important part of this Bulldogs pitching staff came in on Monday in their game three against Arkansas. Was extremely efficient. Now, similar situation coming in relief, trying to minimize the damage. You see her clock in around 70 to 73 miles per hour. She's the, one of the fastest pitchers on this pitching staff but it's her spin that, that helps separate her, that drop ball again. We'll see her predominantly lower half the zone. Five pitch walk worked by Mueller and a one out base runner in the fourth. There's Chelsea Wilkinson, the pitching coach for Georgia. She was an All-American back in her days for the Bulldogs. Working with this veteran staff in the circle. One that has issued five walks so far tonight. To one of the most potent offenses in the SEC as Riley West takes a strike. We heard head coach Tony Baldwin mention exactly that. We can't be giving up free bases. Walters comes in the circle, gives up the free bag to Mueller. Now, Mueller is a dangerous hitter, so keeping her, limiting her to just one bag isn't a bad thing. But now you have the meat of the lineup here with West, Gibson, and Pooney coming up and already one on. Another opportunity for Tennessee here to try to extend the lead early in this game. Rounded to third, Mosley to second. Lead out recorded. Bang, bang play at second base, Miller. Looked as if she was stealing second, just got a really good jump because of it. Was a lot closer to that bag than maybe an average runner. And it looks like we might, Coach Weekly might challenge this play. Getting all the intel 
from Laura Mueller. The Roman on the field that the mother is out on second day. Tennessee is challenging that group. So Tennessee has utilized its first challenge tonight. The call the field was that Mueller was out at second. On what was a really close play up the middle. It's because Mueller got a really good jump at first. Now look at her right foot. It looks like her right foot is there before the ball is in the glove. This is a great job by our camera crew, able to slow this down and Maya to me that right lead foot when she's sliding in. Look at where her foot touches the bag versus the ball in the glove. And to me, that's enough evidence to overturn this call. It looks like she beat it by a millisecond. It has to be Absolutely. indisputable ab evidence. And so the ruling overturned clear-cut evidence and a soft smirk on the face of Laura Mueller, who stands in scoring position. Another look at this one. Look at her right foot is on top of that bag before that ball is in the glove of Kuma. It's the right call, and now Lady Vols with a lot more momentum. They already have. Yeah, big difference between one on and two out. Instead, it's two on with one out for McKenna Gibson, who delivered the damage in the first. One on, and a big time blast over everything. A powerful, potent hitter in Gibson, and she's seen the ball really well, hitting 366, one of the top averages on the team. It was her sixth home run of the year, and got this Tennessee offense on the board in the bottom of the first. With that two run homer, she has since added on with a single. Two for two tonight. A lone lady ball with extra base with multiple hits. And ahead two balls and one strike. Walters has to be careful when you're pitching to someone as potent as Gibson, who has already taken it out of the ballpark earlier in this game and has just seen the ball really well. Nothing close and no mistakes. To the left, good one on the way in. Two out. Gibson is not an easy hitter to, to get to pop out. Nice job by Walters, kind of gets her on the end of the bat there. That's a crucial second out for Georgia because now they just can go to the, the easiest bag here. First, second, third, wherever it's hit, get the closest out, easiest out here to end the inning. And if Georgia's able to, to walk out of here unscathed and keep this game at 3-0, that, that's a win. Zeta Pooney. Takes ball one, back pick to second. Oh, good stop by Sydney Kuma, the second baseman. As Mueller dirties up the pinstripes. Davis showing off the cannon behind the plate. Two balls and no strikes. Santa Cooney 0 for 2 tonight is fly, flied out and grounded out. Hit well to center field. Good night all the way back. It's behind her. One run is in to score. Here comes West. And Zeta Pooney drives home a pair to make it 5 0 Tennessee. Great piece of hitting by Zeta Pooney. Able to barrel this one up and hit it to the right side of Good Night in center field. Watch her hands inside. Gets her butt barrel all the way through the zone and just a laser. Good night. Didn't have much of a chance there. It also looked like she was playing a little in, a little shallow for someone, uh, for the power of someone like Zeta Pooney. But Pooney makes it count, extends the lead 5 0 for Tennessee. Gets the fans to their feet as Zeta Pooney delivers with two out here in the fourth. She led the team and runs batted in last season and delivers in the clutch. A little extra breathing room. And a little smile from Zeta Pooney. You don't normally see that too often from her. But well-deserved smile being able to come up clutch with two outs for her team. Give Tennessee a little bit of a cushion 
here in the bottom of the fourth. Rodriguez grounds it to short. Armistead puts a close to the fourth. But Earlier this week, she says when it comes to making a run to the World Series, it starts in the circle. A couple of rock stars in the circle. That might be the second life for Peyton Gottschall. Think she's having any fun tonight? How cool is that to see? <laughs> it's a great job by our camera Absolutely. crew ca capturing that moment. We're having fun. You got, you got to believe that they're having fun too. Emily Digby back up. Ball and a strike to the freshman Digby. Walked her first time up and was stranded in scoring position. Sky high in the air, center field and carrying. Leach on the way back, watches it fly. The freshman, Emily Digby, gets the dogs on the board. Georgia leads the SEC in home runs this season, and it's come from multiple players, including this young woman right here, the freshman, Emily Digby, able to square up this pitch by Carlin Pickens. Pickens throws this one way over the plate mid-level and a mistake really by Pickens and Digby able to use not only her power but the velocity of Carlin Pickens to barrel that ball up and take it out of the ballpark. A little bit of a mo momentum shift here for Georgia, top of the fifth. Yeah, maybe the life that Georgia needs. Savage chain is on for the fresh face in the order. Emily Digby with her fourth home run of the season makes it a four-run ball game. Dallas Goodnight fouls it away. Goodnight has battled lingering injuries throughout the season, but back and healthy in the order. One of those five players in the batting nine hitting over 350. That has transitioned away from always slapping to more swing away. And still see the slapping game out of the nine spot at times. She is rung up on three pitches. Carlin Pickens with another K, her fifth. That's the second strikeout for good night. And the second time she was struck out looking. And it's a tough position for Georgia after coming up with that big home run, having that, that immediate strikeout. But now Georgia turns the lineup around to the top trying to keep that momentum going. That's exactly what head coach Tony Baldwin talked to us about in his, in his mid-game interview is making those adjustments on Carlin Pickens. She's doing a good job of mixing speeds. He says you got to be able to, to quickly adjust to that or have a better game plan, right? You asked me earlier, what do you do when you're facing a pitcher with a good change up and a really fast fastball, right? Two completely different speeds. You, got, you pick one, have a game plan, and attack that. And that's what Emily Digby did in her at bat. Three balls and no strikes to Lindy Ray Davis. And Davis did not begin the year in the leadoff spot. That's the place she was placed back in the first week of March and has really shined since taking over at the top of the order. And it's been drawing the walks. That was a called strike off the arm of Pickens. But since moving into the leadoff spot, Lindy Ray Davis leading the team in walks and on base percentage of over 500 in that stretch. That's a Georgia team that's third in the SEC in free passes drawn. But a Lady Vol pitching staff that doesn't really issue that many. Only one issued by Carlin Pickens tonight. Lindy Ray Davis is not your prototypical leadoff hitter because she has so much power. But she's a good leadoff hitter because she is patient. She is selective. You mentioned she leads Georgia and walks this season. And then when she is able to barrel that ball up, she's a tough out. And she deposits an opposite field single. One out base runner for the Bulldogs. Davis gets Pickens you know, found a changeup. She always had the changeup, <laughs> but she's trusting it. That's a bit yes. Karen Weekly alluded to the confidence. 
now. Sarah Mosley takes the ball outside. It, you bring up a great point. It's not as if the, the changeup just appeared overnight for Carla Pickens. <laughs> she had it, and it was very effective last season. She had the highest percentage of strikeouts on that changeup, more than any other pitcher in the country, but now she's throwing that pitch 20% of the time. That's the difference. It wasn't her go-to pitch. Her fastball has always been the pitch she's most comfortable with. But in the fall, Coach Weekly saying, no, 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 we're not going to focus on the fastball. We're, we're focusing in on the changeup. We're just throwing that changeup, the drop, and the rise. We're going to get you more comfortable with those. That's what's happened. As good a time as ever for this Georgia offense. This is the spot you want up. Mosley, Kearney, and Goodman. Three big bats followed by Chambly and Kuma. And Sarah Mosley, the preseason an All-American coming off an All-American campaign. There's Kearney as Mosley hits it hard to short. Gobbled up by Mueller, throws across in time. Nice job by Mueller sticking with the play. That ball was hit so hard off the bat of Mosley that it gets to Mueller right away, kind of gets a little bit of a, a tweener hop, able to keep it in front of her. And because she kept it in front of her and kept her poise, still able to get the out at one. So now two out as Davis advances to second on the play. Jada Kearney, a healthy swing that comes up empty. That pitch is the same pitch that Kearney struck out on her last at bat in the third inning. That low off speed. Needs to make an adjustment here third time through. High and tight, one ball and one strike. Kearney one for two. Has singled and struck out tonight. Tied for the league high with 14 home runs and in a big spot here. There is Digby who ignited this Georgia offense with a solo shot to begin the half inning. And the All-American Jada Kearney ahead, two balls and a strike. Georgia searching for that timely hitting tonight. They've left four runners on base so far. Right now, runner in scoring position, two outs have to come up with that timely hitting. Green light count. Kearney in the driver's seat, three and one. And this is who you want up in this position, Mayan, hitting 389, seeing the ball better than anyone in this lineup right here. This is who you want to, to try to come up clutch. She works her way aboard. The patience pays off. Two on with two out in the fifth for Georgia. A big moment here for the Bulldogs. You can kind of feel the momentum shift a little bit, especially after Digby's solo home run to start this inning, cutting the deficit to four. And also a tough position now for Carlin Pickens as she faces the heart of this lineup. She walked Kearney now having to face Jaden Goodwin, who's also hitting the ball very well, leading the team, hitting 415. Two in, one in scoring position, two on the base pass with two out for Goodwin. Here is 0 for 2 tonight. Goes after the first pitch. Gibson on one hop, closes the book on the top of the fifth. A great game so far. Taylor Panel leads off the Tennessee half of the fifth. 5-1 Lady Vols. Two runs in the first, one run of the third, and then two runs across in the fourth. Georgia with its lone run across in the top half of the fifth, a solo homer. Great to have you with us tonight. The series opener between these two teams. Mike Patel, Jill Delnick, our outstanding crew with you in Knoxville. They've got an early start, noon tomorrow, and then 11 a.m. on Sunday, both nationally televised contests. And this panel works the count to one and two. Walters back in the circle for Georgia. One of the fastest pitchers on this Bulldog staff. Consistently in that 70, 71 miles per hour, but that change up and drop ball, roughly 10 mile per hour difference. You'll see here her live mostly in that bottom half of the zone, but can go to her rise occasionally. And 
So far, Tennessee has been able to time her up. Scoring the run, two runs back in the fourth. Two bounces to Mosley, one out. But other than those two runs, I think Walters has done a nice job so far kind of minimizing the damage, right? No long balls. She did give up a walk last inning. And a two-run double from Zeta Pooney, but so far a lot of ground balls and, and pop-ups from Walters. Sophia Nugent takes ball one outside. Two balls and no strikes. Walters, a veteran presence in the circle. Sixth season of college softball. She spent her first four playing for the Duke Blue Devils before transferring into Athens last year. She was third team all region, first team all conference, sub two ERA. And she also had seven saves in the circle. That was the most of the SEC. So certainly someone Tony Baldwin and company had a lot of confidence in late in the ball games. Big part of the reason she's a preseason All-American. Catches a piece, three and one. And there's no question Tennessee will, will see her again, most yeah, likely this season, right? You mentioned she's pitched in eight straight games for the Bulldogs. She's a go-to and also helps provide that relief in a different look than the rest of the pitching staff. Issues the walk there to Nugent, who's aboard with one out in the fifth. A common issue for the Bulldogs pitching staff tonight with Walters and Backus has, has been those, those free bases. For Walters, that's her second walk since entering the game. Backus with a handful of free bags as well. That's going to come to hurt you when you're going up against a team like Tennessee that does well with runners in scoring position, capitalizing, coming up with that timely hit. And that's, that's been the difference in this ball game tonight. Katsoyanopoulos up for the third time. And the count even at one ball and one strike. Katsoyanopoulos taking the moment to talk to Tennessee hitting coach Chris Malvo in his third season at Tennessee. And Coach Malveaux came to Rocky Top and really emphasized getting that power in the lower body, using that to engage the rest of the swing, hinging at the hip and making those internal adjustments. That's something he's preached since he got here to Rocky Top three years ago, and you've seen the numbers, you've seen the result be the long ball for Tennessee. They're hitting it out of this park more than they ever have been. 1-1, one, one, flipped the other way, falling fast and down. One out base knock for Julia Katsoyanopoulos puts two aboard for the Lady Vols. Katsoyanopoulos able to get her barrel on this ball just a tad outside, but she stays in the zone, does a nice job keeping her head on that ball and doesn't hit this one too hard, but hits it enough to go over the head of Kuma and in for a base hit. Lady Vols now with runners on first and second, one down as they continue to find holes and swing the bat well, string them together. Alana Leach in the ninth spot. Takes a strike on the inner half. Leach is 0 for 2. She struck out her first time and then dropped a buck down right in front of the plate. Her last time up was a nice play from Davis behind the dish. Two on for the true freshman. You can see Leach go to her slapper form. She can also hit away. That's what we saw her do her first at bat, and then her second at bat had the sneaky bunt. But right now, trying to use her speed, just get her barrel on something and slap that down. That's off of Walter's glove, and it is safe at first for Leach. Everybody aboard, they're loaded in the fifth. Leach does exactly what a slapper is trying to do. Make contact, hit it hard down on the ground with that bat angle and try to beat it out. Look at her bat angle. She gets on top of that ball, hits it hard in the ground and goes right over the glove of Walters. That's exactly 
what a slapper is supposed to do in these situations. Not only did she move the runners over, but she also reached safely. So now Tennessee with bases loaded and one down. Yeah, I think Georgia's going to challenge this. As Tony Baldwin will take a look on the play at first. This will be his second challenge. Yep, they lost the first one. So second and final challenge being utilized by this Bulldogs staff. Calling the field is that everybody was safe all around. And the conversation looks like it is coming to a close as we take another look. Close play, Leach. Looks like she was safe and the ruling is upheld. So, the bases are loaded. As the card flips back to the top of the order, which is not Kiki Malloy tonight. The All-American out with a lower body injury, missing the first game of her Tennessee career. And Laura Miller, the MTSU transfer, has been slotted in the leadoff spot with the bags full here in the fifth. No, it's not Kiki Malloy, but Laura Miller has been one of the hottest hitters for Tennessee in March alone. Hit 432 with seven home runs. This is a hot hitter. It's coming into her own, and she's doing it with a lot of confidence. And this is her first year on Rocky Top. We're transferring over from MTSU. Had a conversation with Coach earlier this season about not putting too much pressure on herself, and since then, her numbers have been lightened up. 1-1 one, one pitch from Walters. Two balls and a strike. Mueller with a couple of walks, sandwiching a ground out tonight. She has scored two of the five Tennessee runs. Doing what she's needed to is the table setter. And now a full table ahead of her. Time to eat if she can. Two balls and one strike. Here's the pitch. Two and two. Georgia pitching staff has labored out of a couple jams, keeping the damage minimized for Tennessee. The floodgates have not opened. They're one mistake away from doing so. Strike three swinging and a big time punch out from Walters. Love the emotion from Walters after that pitch. You could see her fired up. This is a tough out to get. She gets Miller on that outside curveball away from her. Excellent pitch, and Walters able to, to get a crucial second out here. Base is still loaded. Ball and no strikes to Riley West. Shelby Walters trying to work out of it. One and one. West one for three tonight. One of six, Lady Vols hitting over 300. This is the meat of the lineup. This is a dangerous part of the lineup. Walters trying to minimize the damage here, get this crucial third out. And she is a pitch away from doing it. Walters. In the circle, looking for a critical final out of the fifth to strand the bases loaded. This is why you come to the SEC for nights like this, moments like this. The one, two, strike three swinging. Back to back strikeouts for Shelby Walters, and she strand Arkansas in the SEC. No shortage of strong wins on the schedule, and they immediately get some production in the sixth. An opposite field single from Sydney Chambly. Chambly struck out her last at bat in the fourth, attacks the first pitch out of Carlin Pickens in the circle, jumps all over it, pokes it in that 5 6 hole, does exactly what the leadoff hitter needs to do as Georgia needs to get a rally going here as they trail by four, top of the sixth. I think they've got some momentum after that end to the fifth inning, needs to translate to the offense. Lone run across was a solo homer, last inning from Emily Digby. Five other hits tonight for Georgia, but no more runs as Sydney Kuma stands in the box in an 0-1 count. Here it is. 
Down the line, foul. That's the second foul down the right hand side. That's been a, a foot or two away. Could have been a, a game changer here. She hits this on the end of her bat. And just, I'm going to say, a foot and a half. That's how close that went. We say softball and baseball is a game of inches. Well, there's your proof. No balls and two strikes. Bouncer up the middle. Could be to Rodriguez. To Mueller. To first. Not in time for the double play, but the lead out recorded up the middle. One down to the sixth. Thanks to the speed of Kuma, able to break up the double play, but middle infielders Rodriguez Miller do a good job getting that force out, but the speed of Kuma just too much. She's already well past that bag by the time the ball arrives. Good heads up play by Tennessee. Now Georgia with one down, one runner on. Trying to string some hits together as Coach Baldwin might make a change here. Yeah, Tony pinch Baldwin runner. has gone to the bench for a pinch hitter. And it's Jaden Fields batting in place of Ellie Armistead. Fields, the grad student, second team all conference last season. Trying to ignite a sixth inning rally. Goes after the first pitch. Rodriguez lays out and makes the play. Great job by Destiny Rodriguez. Diving to her gloved hand side. That's a hard hit ball. Not, and then she doesn't even get back up on her feet. Makes the throw from her knees because she knows she's running out of time. She's smiling after that one. That was a crucial play. Georgia able, though, to advance the runner to second on the play. But now Bulldogs with two outs here. Back to Digby, who had the solo homer last inning. Fields came off the bench, went after the first pitch from Carlin Pickens, and it resulted in the second out of the inning. Pickens, this is inside 2-0. You surprised at all that Fields didn't want to see one and went after the first pitch? No, not at all. It, from pinch hitters, they, they know they have to come in aggressive, have yeah. that aggressive mindset. That, that could be their only at bat sure. of the game. I, I like that a lot, especially when you know Pickens has that speed. You can anticipate. We never like to say you guess in softball, right? But you can anticipate that she's going to come at you, a hitter that she hasn't seen before, a hitter that hasn't seen you, come at you with that speed. She jumped all over it. Two balls and two strikes. On two teams loaded with veterans, this is a battle of youngsters. The reigning SEC freshman of the year. Standout sophomore Pickens in the circle to the freshman Digby. And we'll have a full count, three and two. Good take by Digby. You could see her motion start her swinging motion and then hold up as she recognized that rise. 3-2 has to protect anything close. Flips it to Katsoyanopoulos and the side is retired. Nice job settling in after giving up those first two runs back in the fourth. She played her high school ball at GPS down outside of Chattanooga there. Mascot the Bruisers, and boy, did she look like one. Battle tested <laughs> and aggressive there in the circle to keep it a four-run ball game. That was the winning run at the plate with the bases loaded for Tennessee in the fifth. So Walters back to work again the eighth consecutive game as she's pitching for Georgia in relief here tonight. Now the count even at one ball and one strike to Julia Katsoyanop, or excuse me, to McKenna Gibson in the three spot. Gibson got the scoring started. We have the two-run homer in the bottom of the first. Georgia in the SEC has taken that pitch by committee approach throughout the series, throughout their three-game series. And again, Walters, with her experience, being able to come in tonight and, and try to simmer the bats down for the Lady Vols. It's going to be 
a reoccurring theme this weekend and also for the rest of SEC. How can they continue to minimize da damage as a staff? Right now, the Georgia pitching staff, a 231 ERA in the regular season. Gibson with one bounce to the right field wall, a wide turnaround first, chugging for second, slides in safely. McKenna Gibson with a lead off double in the sixth. Gibson, not known for her speed, but she committed to that double and was able to get in there safely. Does a nice job squaring up this strike bottom of the zone. Gets her barrel underneath it, hits it a right field, and she could see it. The ball was right in front of her, so she knew she gave herself that green light, and, and she was off to the races. So she immediately puts herself in scoring position with her third hit of the night. Responsible for a three of now eight Lady Vol hits in this series opener. And as Walters climbs back on the rubber to face Zeta Pooney. Pooney goes after the first pitch, rolls it to Mosley, and records the out. Nice play by Mosley, not only fielding the ground ball, but also checking Gibson at second. Gibson is known for her speed, so she most likely didn't have an aggressive jump at second, but just freezing her for that split second allowed Gibson to stay where she was, Mosley to make the out at first. Rodriguez to Armistead, across the diamond. What a pick by Digby. Web gem play all around. <laughs> um, great play by Digby there. The tough play for Armistead having to go all the way across the diamond. Look at this backhand by Armistead. Watches it all the way in, turns. Yes, she's off the off uh, balance there, but Digby able to pick her up with the backhand. Nice smooth backhand to get the out at, two, at first and the second out of the inning. Strike one to Taylor Panel. So after the leadoff double by Gibson, both Pooney and Rodriguez retired on the first pitch of their at-bats, and Walters now on the brink of a clean sixth. Georgia has made a couple of defensive changes. Sidney Chambly in patrolling center field, and the new battery mate this half inning is Marissa Miller. Who frames that one on the corner, one and two. There's Chambly out in center field. One-two pitch to panel. Slow roll at a third. Side is retired. Walters works around the lead off. To Carlin Pickens in the circle. Pick credit to Pickens. She is throwing fire today and getting them to miss hit. First pitch to Marissa Miller. Two bounces to short and Miller records the first out of the seven. Miller, Miller into bat off the bench after coming in defensively and she's retired on the first pitch she faces. The difference in the ball game so far today has been Pickens mixing her pitches, mis mixing her speeds, and, and Georgia's offense just not being able to make adjustments and catch up to her. Top of the order. Strike one to Lindy Ray Davis. Davis one for three tonight. Singled her last trip. Another effective night in the circle for Carlin Pickens. Her 100th pitch of the outing is grounded to first. Katsoyanopoulos with the foot race wins it. Georgia down to its final out. Well, Tennessee's offense was able to, to jump on, on Georgia's pitchers pretty early in this game. It, it took Georgia's offense too long to, to get going, to get active, right? Because the only run they've had was that home run from Emily Digby back in the fifth inning. That's been the difference so far. Fouled away by Mosley. No balls and a strike. Pickens has been sensational this season. 
0.77 ERA coming into tonight, looking for her 11th complete game for Tennessee this year. And I think that's a stat that sometimes doesn't get a lot of credit. Get going the distance, getting that complete game. It's not easy to do in this sport, especially when you go up against elite hitters that make adjustments, but Pickens has been so difficult to time up. It's because of her combination of that off speed that she's now throwing 20% of the time, and then also her fastball that tops out at around 76 miles per hour. That combination of speed and off speed makes her very difficult to time up and gets a lot of hitters to swing and miss. Georgia down to its final strike. Two and two on Sarah Mosley. The All-American fifth year fans on their feet. Five strikeouts tonight for Pickens, her 2-2. Wins the game, six Ks in the circle. Carlin Pickens goes the distance.